hello people of the internet um, and uh, sort of a warning to my subscribers um, I'm just about to make a video or share a video with you that has absolutely nothing to do with color grading lenses cameras or filmmaking well almost nothing to do with filmmaking um, but what I want to talk about is a long sort of lost passion or a passion that sort of has been reignited in me and that is um, playing the piano I absolutely love the piano and I love making music playing music and um, yeah, it's just another one of my passions that keeps me almost sane. And um, I guess I wanted to share this with you in case you had a similar passion. Um, because, well, first of all, there are millions of videos on the internet that talk about um, what I'm about to talk about, which is digital instruments or virtual instruments. Um, and the ability to actually play really high quality pianos and other instruments, of course, in in your own home with a keyboard using a MIDI keyboard interface. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about what a MIDI keyboard is and all that sort of thing. But I will sort of give you a sort of a rundown and hopefully maybe save you some time if you're interested in looking into this sort of thing because it's fucking awesome. And I'm, I'm going to show you uh, sort of what's been exciting me lately and, and what I've been wasting all this money that I don't even have on. Um, <laughs> sorry, honey. And um, yeah, so it's keeping me, like I said, semi-sane. So um, I don't really drink alcohol all that much. I definitely don't do heroin very often. And, um, you know, to help, things that help keep me sort of grounded on this earth is playing the piano. And um, so I've got this keyboard hooked up to my computer. And, you know, it's a $350 keyboard. It has weighted keys, which means it feels like a piano. So you might be able to hear the, like, dook, 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 the little note. Uh, hammers that you know it feels like a real piano it doesn't feel like a keyboard so that's key for me if you really want to get the most out of about what I'm about to show you so um, what I have here is this piece of software called Cubase so if you're familiar with video editing software which I'm sure you are and audio editing software we've got things like timelines and monitors and things like that so in Cubase it's similar and basically I've got these layers here and each one of these layers I've loaded up a virtual instrument and if I was to go ahead and record I could play something like, I don't know, the uh, chopsticks. Okay, so awesome video so far, right? And then we can double click on that and then we can actually have a look at that. And like I said, I'm sort of still learning how to use all this stuff, but basically those notes that I just played are here. And what's cool is you can move them around and you can change how hard you press them and how you can just change anything basically, it's amazing. So you've got this ultra high quality, 96 kilohertz, 24 bit audio recording using these samples that are built into this piano and they get recorded as MIDI notes. So that's a sort of ultra basics of what this sort of software can do. Um, it's also um, you know, used in Hollywood music production and all kinds of music productions. Oh, it's fucking awesome and something I'm sort of just getting into. The point is, what I wanted to show you today is one, how you can sort of get into this and have a play with it if you are a pianist and or a musician and you wanted to get into virtual instruments because like, you know, what am I, 36, nearly 37? This is a new thing for me. This is like fucking amazing. So kids of today are probably like, yeah, like virtual instruments. And to me, I'm just like, holy shit, I didn't realize like how fucking awesome they sound and how affordable it can be to actually set this up. So, um, first of all, you need Cubase, um, or this whole bunch of other DAWs, they're called Digital Audio Workstations. I, I don't know, I just use Cubase because that seems to be the preference on the internet. And let's be honest, the internet knows everything. So Cubase, um, I went and splashed out and bought the Pro version, which I probably don't need. Um, you can buy the Lite version for 75 bucks, and I think that's worth it. I think there's also free ways to be able to play these pianos, but... I don't know, the light version is still pretty amazing, worth 75 bucks, have a look at that. So what about the actual instruments themselves? And this was the part that sort of, you know, took me a lot of man hours to figure out, man and or woman hours to figure out, and, um, f you know, which pianos do I like, how much do they cost, how do I load them into my software, and all that sort of crap. And um, I did a whole bunch of, sh well, shitloads of research, and I spent like a lot of money, I sort of wasted a lot of money on, um, on this one, no offense, Native Instruments. Uh, native Instruments, and um, this this company called Native Instruments have a whole bunch of, as you can imagine, virtual instruments, including pianos. And then I sort of got hooked into this Complete Eleven Ultimate, which basically cost me a house deposit. Um, but it has a shitload of instruments in it, not just pianos. It has a, an entire orchestra, heaps, heaps and heaps of cool stuff. So check that out. Um, so I splashed out and bought that. 
That includes a whole bunch of pianos like the Grandeur, the Giant, Alicia Keys's piano, the Maverick, the Gentleman, and um, if we just have a quick look at those, they sort of, you load them into this window here into a, a contact player, and then you can just like go ahead and play them. And each piano sounds different and each piano has a whole bunch of controls. But what is unique and sort of fascinating about this virtual instrument world is that it's meticulously, like these instruments aren't just computers saying, hey, this is what a piano should sound like. Like these are actual recordings of pianos and you might think okay well that's easy enough I could just record a piano and make my MIDI keyboard play it yeah but it's not that simple they've got like 32,000 microphones set up and every time you press a key if it's a staccato or if it's a long sustained note they record all of those and they layer them into this virtual instrument this is what's so cool about it like for example if I was to press uh, C on my keyboard you can see that's using four notes or it's using four voices that was using eight, when I let go, it's using another eight. Um, so basically, it's not just one recording, it's four different recordings playing that note, depending on how hard you press it, how long you press it, all that sort of crap. So that sort of gives you an overview of how all this works. And um, yeah, you can just go ahead and buy pianos. And um, the reason I'm making this uh, video is to sort of show you um, the differences between some of these pianos. So if you're interested in getting into this, um, even not necessarily for recording music and producing music, but just literally for playing music. For me, this was like a real uh, world-changing, life-changing thing. Um, yeah, so I did all this research, and when I bought that Contact 11, like I said, it came with all these pianos. The Giant is one, and definitely Google this stuff. Have a look on YouTube, YouTube The Giant Piano. Like this is a real piano <laughs> that someone's made, or the native instruments have made and sampled. Like, that's just fucking crazy. Look at that. I want that. I want that in my house. I also want a house. Anyway, so we've got all these different pianos. They sound different. Let's go, and have, uh, go ahead and have a listen to how much they sound, to how they sound. <laughs> um, and I guess the value you're going to get out of this is that, um, you know, I'm always a cheapskate, you know, trying to save money where I can. And what I wanted to show you is some of these pianos are fucking expensive. Like, let's be honest, considering like a real Yamaha C7 is, you know, what, $75,000. And this piano cost me 249 US. That's not expensive, really. But $249 US for a bunch of WAV files. Uh, just, it seems expensive. The Fazioli Ebony Grand costs fucking $349. I think even for the, for the big version, it's even like $499. So, you know, like they get very expensive for these virtual instruments. But then there's ones like Addictive Keys, which only cost 79 bucks. And what I want to show you is that like this piano can sound pretty fucking awesome. It can sound nearly as good as the Pearl Concert Grand. So I have favored the Pearl Concert Grand. I put that at the top. It was the actual, uh, the first one I bought actually. And I've got to be honest, I'll start playing in a second and show you what all this, you know, if you're still watching what all this stuff sounds like, but personally, this piano is my favorite. It's absolutely beautiful, expressive, and yeah. So what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> without further ado, I'm gonna start playing um, some pianos. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you the Fazioli Ebony Grand because as soon as I fire up um, this piece of audio software, it just freaks out, it doesn't work. So I don't know what the hell's going on there. Um, maybe I'll show you that another day when I figure it out. Anyway, let's have a listen. I'm going to play some Chopin and I'm going to compare a few of these. Um, actually, before I play Chopin, let's just do this. What if I just play some chords? So that's the Pearl Concert Grand. And I'm just going to flick through each one of these real quick. You ready? So as you can see, each one of these pianos has a different sound and a different feel depending on where you're playing them, how hard you're playing them, if you're using sustain or staccato and things like that. Um, and what I have noticed on the internet is all these reviews about grand piano shootouts and VSTI shootouts is they play an entire song for the Pearl Concert Grand and then two minutes, three minutes later you hear Addictive Keys entire song and it's just hard to compare them side by side. So what I'm going to try and do is just play like a few notes, a small section of a song, and then quickly change to another piano, play the same small section of a song. Hopefully then you just get an idea of like what the different sounds are. And um, then I'm sort of going to have a, a look through these and, and show you which ones I like for different sorts of playing styles. 
Um, so we will start with the Pearl Concert Grand. And um, I'll just play a little piece that I wrote earlier. <laughs> Okay, and let's quickly change to this one. They all sound nice, right? See, some of them sound like really nice in certain sections of the keyboard, and in other sections they sound shit. Like the Giant, for example. You know, let's have a look at the Giant again. It sounds really good down low. As you can imagine, right? I mean, look how long these strings are, and look how big the, you know, the container is for this amazing piano. It just sounds freaking awesome. Like, it's so expressive that I feel like with the quieter stuff, it's just like a little bit muffled. You know what I mean? So if you play something like... It sort of just feels like there's a blanket on top of it. I don't really like that sound. Whereas down below, it sounds so fucking cool, like... So sick, like what a beast. So that has some great uses and maybe for a dream sequence or some Zelda Twilight music like like it sounds beautiful right but it doesn't really sound like a real piano to me it doesn't feel like I'm playing a real piano whereas if we jump to the Pearl Concert Grand again it's my favorite this I feel like this has a lot of depth all around a lot of it just feels nice all around um, and granted you know, the next thing you'll learn about all these virtual instruments is you can play with how many mics are turned on, how much reverb there is, you can play with a whole bunch of different shit. Um, so I've sort of just made them all sound similar-ish, as best as I can. These aren't all out of the box, I have messed with them, but bad luck. It's still a good comparison, I feel. Um, Let's just quickly jump to the giant. I just feel like there's there's still a lot of expression available in the pearl and it just sounds it just sounds beautiful all the time. I don't know. And then other ones like the Alicia Keys or Alicia's Keys. You know, it is a nice sounding piano. We should um, bring this one up, close this one off. And But one thing that I think is hilarious is like, I'm pretty sure that's just a water bottle. And like, someone's just like, um, who left their water bottle in the shot? Let's just make it pink. And maybe someone will think it's a lamp. Is that a lamp? It looks like a bottle of water. It looks like a bottle of Evian to me. Um, <laughs> anyway, Alicia's Keys sounds beautiful. You can still smash it. But sometimes it just sort of sounds cheap, like, I don't know. Yeah, up here. Like. Not cheap, it just doesn't sound real. I don't know what it is. It's something up here. Mm. Uh, what about like... You hear that and you're like, oh, that's nice. But then if you hear this. It just sounds so much better. And you're saying like, shut up about the Pearl Concert Grand. We get it. You like it. 
But I don't know, there's the Maverick as well. Let's have a quick listen between the Maverick and the Gentleman. These two come with Native Instruments pianos. So we got the Gentleman there, which is an upright, and the Maverick, which is like an old school grand. Um, I don't like either of them. <laughs> well, I don't like the Maverick. But let's have a quick listen. Um, let's play some staccato stuff from Zelda, maybe. So the Maverick. <laughs> switch to the gentleman again it just sounds like there's a blanket on it and like you can you can play with things like the tone right and make it sound less blankety so we go to the gentleman um, there's a thing here called tone right um, like Maybe that's why it's called the gentleman because it's so velvety and soft. But like it just it's so hard to punch through the higher notes. Like we push this up to hard. Now it just sounds cheap, I reckon. Yeah, I don't know. So, I don't know. Oh, what this will maybe give you a very biased opinion of what these pianos sound like. Um, obviously, because you can add reverb, you can go to the tone, you can change like heaps of shit and make it sound more like you want it to. But again, the Pearl Concert Grand right out of the box, even with all of these stage hall and pedal mics turned off, it just sounds grand. It just sounds good to my ear. That's probably because I have played on a um, C7 Yamaha a few times many times actually, um, just in practice halls and things like that, and I just freaking love that piano, so maybe that's what it is. Um, let me play some actual tunes for you. Um, yeah, let's play The Secret, or it's called Secret from, um, it's a Cantonese movie called Secret, I reckon you should check it out. Um, so I'm just going to play this, and let me know what you think. So I'll play most of it on the Pearl Concert Grant, and then I'll switch to Addictive Keys, because I personally think that once you muck around with addictive keys, and I said, you know, you shouldn't have to do this, but you can really get this cheap $79 piano to sound almost as good as the Pearl Concert Grand. And I reckon um, the whole sort of pointless, if you're still watching, what a boring rambly video, that the Concert Grand and the addictive keys are the nicest pianos in my collection. Of course, the Pearl Concert Grand's expensive, but this thing's cheap, and I'm gonna show you in a second how nice it sounds. So first of all, let me play some music. Okay, so I fucked that up, I played a bit too quick. But let's just go straight here with a different piano. See, that piano is fucking sick, 79 bucks. Like, let me play it on the gentleman. I don't know, I don't like this piano. No, the Maverick, that sucks balls. Actually, 
sounds good i don't know maybe it's like it's a good piano to belt out but if you're playing sort of soft tunes in the middle like i don't know like um or maybe this one from pretty little lies I suppose if you grew up with this actual piano, you'd probably be like, fuck yeah, this piano sounds beautiful. But I don't know, I think that's what it is. I think it's part of the fact that this piano in my mind, to my brain, that's what a real piano sounds like. And then the rest is sort of, they, they work. By now you're like, hell yeah, these cheap pianos are good, but wait. It's also how it feels. I think that's what's impossible to express over the internet. It's just, I don't know, it's fucking beautiful to play. It just really is. Um, one I've sort of skipped over a lot, Alicia Keys, The Grand Dua. So The Grand Dua is also a nice, grand sounding piano. And again, you can play with all the anatomy, the tone, the dynamic range and all that sort of thing. Dynamic range sort of limits. So if you increase the dynamic range, that means you can play really soft, like, um, um, I don't know, like, um, really hard so, so yeah with the dynamic usually just leaving the dynamic range set to the middle um, addictive keys so I did want to just quickly cover this because I still think that this is the best piano that doesn't cost the earth um, obviously Pearl's the best so but when you first load it up it doesn't have the second and third microphones loaded up it just has, so that it goes empty here and empty here, right? And let's go to the effects and turn them off as well. So just make sure. Turn those off. So we've just got, this is sort of how it comes out of the box. Um. <laughs> it sounds nice. But it sort of sounds again like it's got a blanket over it. I don't like that sound. I like that sound as well as the keys that cut through. So if we add these extra mics, and I like to add it, um, add the ambient tube wide as the second one, and the close tube XY as the third one. Now listen to this. Anyway, that's um, a rambling overview of these pianos. You can sort of Google them, download them, um, and I guess it's worth pointing out how it all works, right? So you've got this main interface. So this is your recording interface. It's kind of like your video editor, and each track, an instrument track, contains the piano, right? So you click on the keys and it brings up the instrument. Then you can modify the instrument. On the left is your track modifications. You can like add effects to it. So this is sort of like your effects track um, for video. Um, but the interface that the piano sits in is actually a separate interface and you have to install it separately. So this is the weird confusing part. So we've got Alicia's keys, right? 
but you cannot bring Alicia's keys into this software unless you have this contact software as well. And how it works is this contact software is actually standalone software. So if we double click that, uh oh, something's probably gonna fuck up now. But basically you have a look at my library and I've got a few libraries here. I've got the Pearl Piano and I actually don't need my recording studio, my DAW to record music. If I just wanna play, I can load it into this contact player. But you actually need the contact player in order to bring these instruments into your door. Um, if that makes sense. So you kind of need two components. You load the instruments into contact first. And, you know, I'm not going to give you a cue based tutorial, so to speak, but if we were to add an instrument track, you go in here and you find it. And then you add the instrument track in there. And then that goes through contact and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, I'm just going to leave you with um, one more cool thing, which is um, I recorded a song. Is it projects? I've got a dongle in there. I don't know what it wants me to activate. The project was generated using a new version of the application. So, and it's looking for my 24-bit samples. Oh yeah, because I moved them. Yeah, anyway, I recorded um, my sort of piano version of Inception. And um, I added a cello. So this is where it gets really exciting. So if you're a pianist or you know you love playing the piano and you want a digital piano, fucking awesome. Just download Contact, buy some pianos, and you're set to go. If you want to record shit and add something like a cello or some violins to that, it's fucking sick what you can do. And if this actually loads, fuck it. I'm just going to go here. And um, here's one I prepared earlier. Fuck yeah, that just blew my mind. So like I play this piano track, sounds cool, but when you add a cello, fuck, it just makes you want to cry. Like, and imagine I added some strings, I don't really know how to write for strings, so I'm sort of learning all this cool new shit, and um, hopefully you've got something out of this video. And again, this is just designed for people who have no idea what the hell a VST is, or a digital piano is, but maybe they play the piano and they're in the video industry. So if you liked it, I don't care if you liked it. <laughs> Thanks for watching though, bye.